gamers! Welcome in to another build video. You may have seen a couple of my previous builds where I make use of the Oaken Soul Mythic for a specific weapon type, like the Oaken Soul Two-Handed build or the Oaken Soul Sword and Shield build. You'll find the link to those in the description. Well here I am again, but this time we're going to be using a bow. There's a slight difference with this build though. I took a look at various different sets that buff bow abilities and none of them really seemed that strong, so I've taken a very different approach. I hope you enjoy and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Without further ado, let's get into the build. Okay, so here we are. Here's our one bar Oaken Soul bow build. Uh, now, this build is really weird. If you know me, you know I don't like running the same as everybody else. You know I don't like running meta. I like running some weird wacky stuff. So I try out some weird wacky stuff. And I was shocked by how effective this build is. Um, I was blown away by it. So, to start off with, we'll show you the stats. But, to be honest, most of the stats don't matter, but we'll talk about them anyway. Um, we got 64 points into stamina. That leaves us 30k health, 26k stamina, 15k magicka. Uh, we've got a really good stamina recovery pool, 1.7k and 1.3k magicka. We have uh, a lot of stamina skills, so we need magicka recovery and we, need, we are using cloak, so we need some magicka recovery too. Uh, we got 4,250 weapon damage. 39% crit, which is really nice to have, and uh, 4k penetration, um, and our resistance is at in 23k, 26k with uh, minor resolve we get from bigger. Kind of low crit resistance, but as we're using stealth uh, on a night blade, that doesn't matter too much. Stealth is our main survivability skill. Um, we are an orc for the extra damage and movement speed as well. Uh, and we are also a stage 3 vampire. Vampire is really good to have on a night blade because you get some very nice buffs to um, when you leave sneak invisibility and mist form and uh, you don't get the sneak penalty either so it's really nice to be a vampire. Uh, you probably only need stage 2 but I like stage 3 anyway and our sustain is more than enough. We're using the thief Munderstone for the extra weapon spell crit and we're using the very expensive Smoked Bear Haunch um, for the max health, health recovery, stamina, and magicka recovery. There are cheaper alternatives, but uh, I really like this one. It's it, it's so helpful. Um, okay, so time to get into the gear. Like I said before, this build is very weird, and it's all about procking enchants and getting my enchant damage as high as possible um, which is very easy to do and very consistent to do because we're using oaken soul we only have one bar we don't really have much else to worry about um, so th the first thing we're using is oaken soul of course gives you loads of minor buffs loads of major buffs you don't need to worry about keeping those buffs up they're up all the time uh, but you can only use one bar um, so of course that only comes in the ring we have that in infused with stamina recovery Somebody's really got out for these mud crabs back here. Um, yeah, so that's the mythic we're using. And then with that, we're using two different five-piece sets. So the first five-piece set we're using is Torog's Pact. Uh, this gives us armor, max health armor, and this decreases our weapon enchant cooldown by 33% and increases our non-oblivion damage potency by 45%. So this buffs our enchant. As you can see, the tool tip, we're using a disease damage enchant. Tool tip is very high um, and the cooldown is very low. So we can proc it a lot and it hits very hard. Uh, we have this on the bow, the necklace, the ring and the helmet. So it's active at all times, five piece. Um, but that's not all. That's not the only thing we're using to buff Fire Enchant. We are also using 5 piece of Harlan's Conqueror, which increases the effectiveness of your weapon traits by 100%. Uh, we have this on 
five body pieces. We have around the shoulders, the hands, the waist, the feet, and the legs. So, Heartland's Conqueror, increasing our weapon trait by 100%, means that we are running the infused weapon trait. Usually the infused weapon trait, when you've golded it out, it gives you increases your weapon enchantment by 30%, but as we have Heartland's Conqueror, it increases it by 60%, and with Torog's Pact, increases it by another 45%. And an extra cooldown of 50% as well. To be honest, I don't know if they stack. I don't know if both the cooldown from Infuse and the cooldown from Torx Pack help each other out. I'm not sure. All I know is that my enchant procs every other light attack. So I light attack, it procs. I light attack again. Nothing happens. I light attack a third time. It procs again. And because it's hitting at 6,877 disease damage, which can also crit, um, and we get a lot of damage through Nightblade crits, it's hitting very, very hard. Um, so that is the main source of damage on this build, is literally just that in jump. And we can spam light attacks and kill people, and uh, or, or the odd heavy attack as well, and it's absolutely, it tears through people. Um, so yeah, we have, uh, we have the five piece Torox on the bow, two jewelry, and the helm. And then five piece Heartlands Conqueror on the body, which leaves one piece, which I like to put a reinforced heavy trainee on, um, just for the extra survivability. I've got two reinforced on the two big pieces, which are heavy. So I have two heavy reinforced big pieces, and then I have well fitted and one divine. You could probably switch some of these to Impen. Um, to be honest, well fitted is just what I had. And it seems to work. Uh, very cheap dodge rolls, very cheap sprinting. I do think I should change this to medium. I think you're better off with four medium. Sorry, yeah, four medium, two heavy, and a light. Um, I currently have three heavy, three medium, and a light. But it's all down to personal preference. Yeah, I think you could probably switch out these heavy feet for a medium feet, and uh, you'll be good. Uh, in terms of jewelry, we have a robust weapon damage on the necklace, and then we have uh, an infused weapon damage on the ring, and then a few stamina recovery on the Oaken Soul. So yeah, I can't really reiterate like how strong this is with the Torog's buff, and then the infused buff, which has been doubled thanks to Harlan's Conqueror. It absolutely hits like a truck. So. So all we need to do on this build, I'll show you how much damage this can do straight off the bat. Here it goes, enemies here. We literally just hit stealth for the crit, do a heavy attack, boom, dead. Easy as that. One shot just from a heavy attack. Absolutely tears through people, does so much damage. You saw how high the crit goes as well. Um, absolutely crazy amount of damage. 26, 27k crit. So yeah, this can absolutely tear through people. If you, you know, heavy attack into skills, which we'll get into in a minute, um, it's absolutely devastating. Speaking of skills, let's go for it. We've only got the one bar, of course, thanks to Oakensoft. Um, the first one we've gone for is Poison Injection. Shoot an arrow coated in Bandari Poison, an enemy, dealing poison damage and an additional poison damage over 20 seconds, and deals extra damage to people who are under 50% health. To be honest, half the time I just heavy attack into this, and it's more than enough to almost kill them, and then I can finish them off with another light attack, and by that point the enchants cool is come off cooldown again, so the enchant will proc again, and absolutely destroy them. Shadowy Disguise, this is our cloak, this is our getaway, this is our hide, and your next direct damage to use within 3 seconds will always be a critical strike. So it's good to use this and immediately heavy attack, uh, and then poison eject. Um, I'm using Bombard, which shoots the burst of arrows, dealing physical damage, but I'm using it for the immobilize. Enemies are here are immobilized for 4 seconds. So this is a good getaway skill, if people are chasing you and trying to bring you out of stealth, I hit them with a bombard to immobilize them and then stri go straight into stealth and then veer off in a direction so they can't chase me. Um, and it's a, a nice little bit of AoE if you come running in and as it's a weapon skill it will also proc your enchant as well. 
Sadly, it doesn't proc on everybody you hit. I tested it. <laughs> it will only proc on the first person who it hits. Um, but it's still good. Uh, Resolve and Vigor are heal. A very nice heal over time. And gives us minor resolve for some extra resistances. Can't go wrong. And Relentless Focus. This is a great skill to have as well. Focus your senses for one minute. It lasts for full 60 seconds. And increases your weapon and spell damage with every light or heavy attack up to five times. And we're using a lot of light and heavy attacks. And then, while active, hitting an enemy with five light or heavy attacks converts the ability into Assassin Scourge, allowing you to fire a spectral arrow for half cost that deals a huge amount of damage and uh, heals for 33%. So if you can get this procced and then you hit them with this and a heavy, like if you heavy attack into Assassin Scourge, that's a huge proc from your enchant and a huge proc from Assassin Scourge and you know, people are going down. And I also have Rapid Fire. Um, you, this is unmorphed and it's still so good. I would morph this into the Sentry uh, so you can put it down and then hit people with light and heavy attacks. So far I haven't even played this enough to morph it because I didn't even have my bow to level 50 and I was still destroying people. That's how good this build is. Um, so yeah, I'd morph that into that one. Um, it does a huge amount of damage of time. And then if you can proc your enchant on somebody as well, there's no way people are surviving that. You'll see from the gameplay at the start of the, start of the video how much, how devastating this is. Okay, so I suppose... It's hard to show you how just how strong this is, even if we just light attack people. You see how often the enchant procs. Um, try and get this Assassin Scourge up. Here we go. So if we just heavy attack into Assassin Scourge, absolutely dead. No chance of surviving. And uh, because you're you barely need to use any skills, it just you never really run out of resources either, so you're just, you know, you use most of your resources on healing and cloaking, and uh, there you go, it's really just as easy as that. The ads don't even stand a chance, they just melt in one shot, it's great. There we have it, last thing we really need to get into, I think, is the champ points. Um, Green tree is always the same. Uh, I do have sustaining shadows on to reduce the cost of sneak. That's nice to have as a night blade. Um, and then always, I always talk about break fall. Make sure you get break fall because you're going to be falling a lot in PvP. Sometimes you just can't help it. Uh, for the blue tree, we have master arms, increasing your damage done with direct damage attacks uh, up to six percent. Uh, backstabber, increase your crit damage done by 2% per stage against enemies you are flanking. So it's really good for a Nightblade. You could see behind, get that huge crit damage. Uh, fighting Finesse, increase your crit damage and critical healing done. Again, great for a Nightblade. And Deadly Aim, increase your damage done with single target attacks, which we have a lot of. Um, celerity for the movement speed. Um, I really like this because you can't sprint in stealth. So it's nice to just have a little bit of movement speed to help get away. Uh, rejuvenation, to be honest, I probably don't need this one. I could probably switch this to something else. But a bit of health, magic, and stamina recovery never hurt. Uh, Pain's Refuge, reduce your damage taken uh, for negative effects. Very good for PvP. And Boundless Vitality, just for the extra health, just to make sure we get over 30k health. And there we go. That's the build. It's absolutely devastated and, of course, so easy to play. What more could you want? Just a heavy attack and people die. Oh, no, and he survived. What are the chances? But there we go, thanks for watching everybody. And that's the build. Like I said, it's a very weird setup, but I've been having a blast playing it. Hope you enjoyed this one, and if you did, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching everyone, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.